to lose weight, we need to eat less and exercise more. Simple, right? It is true that to lose weight, you need to create a calorie deficit. The first law of thermodynamics has not been revoked. But I have learned that things aren't quite that simple. It is less about calories in versus calories out, and more about calories retained or not retained. So when it comes to creating a calorie deficit, which is the more impactful exercise or diet? The junk and fast food industry would love to have us believe that obesity is more a problem of inactivity than consumption, of sloth rather than gluttony. To quote this paper, food and beverage companies have long been accused of trying to exonerate their products from blame by implicating declining physical activity instead. Some research in fact suggests that exercise levels have not declined that much. To quote, independent of the method used, there was no indication that energy expenditure on physical activity or total expenditure has declined over the past two decades, end quote. This implicates food rather than lack of exercise when it comes to the obesity epidemic. Caloric intake has in fact increased significantly, more than enough to account for the rise in obesity, especially in high-income countries. But which foods in particular have been implicated? When we look at prospective population studies where they follow people over time, we find that foods that are predictive of weight gain are meats, junk food like potato chips, and sugary drinks. These foods have been implicated in multiple studies across a number of different groups, both here in the US and in Europe. Now, there are a number of biologically plausible reasons to explain why these foods promote weight gain, such as high caloric density, increased production of insulin-like growth factor, which is anabolic to fat cells, high levels of contamination in animal, animal foods, which can mess with metabolic processes, scientists call these obesogens, the lack of fiber and resistant starch in these foods, which promotes production of thrifty bacteria, or bacteria that do a better job of harvesting energy from food. Well, the list goes on, but I digress. The question at hand is, can we exercise our way out of a poor diet? A number of studies such as these show that exercise is underwhelming when it comes to weight loss. In this list of studies, only one showed that adding exercise improved weight loss outcomes. In this Cochrane review, they found that exercise alone did result in small weight loss, but the loss was much greater when combined with diet. So why is weight loss so difficult with exercise alone? The traditional model, and one that I used to subscribe to, is that 24-hour energy expenditure, or TEE, is the sum of three things. Our resting metabolic rate, the thermic effect of food, and activity energy expenditure, or AEE. So TEE equals RMR plus TEF plus AEE. Thinking was that any calories expended via movement and exercise would increase TE in a linear fashion. The more you exercise, the higher the TE would be. This is known as the additive total energy expenditure model. However, some interesting data on the Hadza, a remote hunter-gatherer tribe in Tanzania, have put this model into question. The Hadza lifestyle is as close to a hunter-gatherer as one can find in this day and age. They hunt and gather on foot with bows, and arrows, small axes, and digging sticks without the aid of modern tools. Their dietary pattern is one that is primarily dependent on plant foods, and wild tubers are their stable food. The intake of fiber is very high, in the range of 80 to 150 grams a day. Now that is impressive. Given their foraging lifestyle and lack of mechanization, one would expect they would expend more calories than those living in first world countries that have more sedentary lifestyles. To test if this was the case, Researchers measured total calories expended over 24 hours, or TE, in 30 Hadza adults using the doubly labeled water method, the gold standard when it comes to measuring TEEs. Contrary to expectations, they found that TEEs of the Hadza were similar to those in age match adults in Western Europe and the US. The TEEs for the Hadza men were around 2,600 calories and 1,900 calories per day for the Hadza women. Not that different to adults here in the US. So how can this be? They weren't sitting at desks all day, they weren't driving cars, watching TV, or taking elevators. They spent a large portion of their time moving. Thus, their 24-hour TE should have been through the roof. Were they just more economical or efficient? Did they burn fewer calories per mile than those in the West? This was not found to be the case. The energy cost of walking a mile for the Hudza was the same as for Westerners. These results have been supported by other studies showing that contrary to conventional wisdom, Humans tend to burn a similar number of calories over 24 hours, i.e. total caloric expenditure stays within a constrained amount regardless of how physically active we are. 
Hence arose the constrained model of energy expenditure. This model suggests that the body saves calories in various ways to adjust for the extra calories burned during exercise. Other species have also been shown to keep total energy expenditure remarkably constant in response to increased physical activity by reducing energy expended on growth, repair, and basobenomolic rate. When you think about it, this makes sense from a survival perspective. Energy is critical for survival. And in situations where there's unreliable food availability and increased energy demands to find food, this is a helpful adaptation to have. The researchers found that on average, those who are moderately active tend to expend about 200 to 300 more total calories each day than people who are total couch potatoes. But beyond that, total energy expenditure starts to level off at higher levels of exercise. So people with the most intensely active daily lives burn a similar number of calories than those with moderately active lives. But what about athletes in training? I would propose that at chronic high levels of exercise, it's hard to conserve enough, i.e. there's only so much that you can conserve without dying. So if you're training for an Ironman or the Tour de France, then your total calorie needs will be higher, but the increase isn't linear as perhaps originally thought. Now the huds are covered about 10 kilometers per day, not insignificant, but not Tour de France levels either. What about more normal levels of training, such as training for a half marathon? A study by Westerterp et al. had a group of men and women participate in a 40-week training program for a half marathon. TE and sleeping metabolic rates were measured at various points throughout the 40 weeks. At eight weeks, the subjects did show an increase in TEE. However, by week 20 and 40, despite increasing exercise loads, TEEs leveled off in both men and women. Sleeping metabolic rate was lower at week 40, despite an increase in fat-free mass. Of interest is that food intake tended to drop off in the men in the latter half of the training period, while it tended to increase a little bit in the women. Thus, the men did lose on average 3.8 kilos or a little over 8 pounds of fat mass while the women only lost 2 kilos or 4.5 pounds. So training can help with some weight loss but perhaps not to the degree that we would hope or expect. Other studies have also reported less than expected weight change in exercise only interventions and that the amount of energy expended from exercise had little to no correlation with weight loss. This was especially true for long-term studies looking at exercise and weight loss. To conclude, we can't completely discount exercise as playing a role. However, dietary changes or reduction in energy intake is more important when it comes to weight loss. To put it more simply, you can't outrun your mouth. The traditional model and one that I used to subscribe, sub, the traditional model and one that I used to, the traditional model and one that I used to, were they just more were they just more econo, were they just more economic in this Cochrane in this Cochrane in this Cochrane review they found that I started started trace blah.